imagine. I mean, we don't have many medications that help people with, with cravings for addictions. First of all, thank you very much. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So we're here to talk about GLP-1 agonists. Normally when we talk about GLP-1s, we're talking about weight loss or, or diabetes. So, so why are they of interest to uh, psychiatrists? Well, they are fantastic because first of all, they have transformed the way that we manage diabetes and obesity. But in the process, they've actually allowed us to see how important these processes that are disrupted by these conditions are for our own field in psychiatry in general. And to start with, if we think about obesity and uh, morbid obesity and the compulsive pattern of eating excessive rewarding food, that is elemental to the same neurocircuitry that is associated with addiction. So this neurocircuitry was not developed for us to take drugs. It was developed for food. So we, now we have a medication that can basically blunt the intense desire driven by a memory that this is rewarding and I want it. In humans and in animal experiments, it also reduces the rewarding effects of drugs and it also prevents you from relapsing. Well, let's talk about the data. So, so what can you see from current research? We see from preclinical data in animal models that uh, they have actually been able to start to dissect why is it that these medications can reduce the rewarding effects of palatable food, and why is it that they can reduce the rewarding effects of nicotine, tobacco, alcohol, cocaine, uh, cannabis, and, and it, it relates to their attenuation of the dopaminergic signal that is necessary to energize your drive to pursue something. From the clinical world, clinical reports, multiple clinical reports saying, patient, commenting on patients that have stopped uh, drinking or smoking who had didn't want to stop drinking or smoking, it just happened on these medications. As well as small clinical trials that have shown results positive for alcohol, positive for tobacco, and positive also for, um, for opioids. There's a, a, small, a small study that shows decreasing craving. There's also a significant amount of data that actually from electronic health records retrospective data where you go back at databases and analyze on people gigantic of millions of people that may have diabetes and addiction or they have sort of obesity and addiction and then compare them with other treatments. And those again consistently show a reduced risk for taking drugs, reduction and better clinical outcomes. What research do we now need for clinicians, as you say, to be able to prescribe these drugs? For us, we are prioritizing this as a research area in ways of funding researchers to do the clinical trials that will fit criteria for the FDA to recognize actually whether this is a positive indication and therefore a valid one. And then the insurances, then, then as a doctor you can ask for insurance reimbursement. Finally, what difference will this make to people who are suffering from, from these cravings, from these addictions? Imagine, I mean, we don't have many medications that help people with, with cravings for addictions. And I, I would say, in general, we have medications for alcohol use disorder, uh, we have them for tobacco, and we have them for opioid use disorder. But not everyone responds, and even for the best of the medications, which are, exist for opioid use disorder, you have 50% of people stopping taking them at six months. And so why are they stopping them and then they are relapsing? So imagine if you can start to link medications. So if one of the reasons why people stop taking them is they start to have cravings and the medications no longer can protect them, then if you combine with these medications, you are offering an alternative. Well, thank you so much indeed for sharing that with us. It's such exciting news, so thank you very much indeed. No, it's very exciting indeed. Thank you. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.